Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome. I'm sure after a nice meal, it's always a bit challenging. Um, the conversation went a little bit beyond that. Talk, we had talked about where the future would be beyond the surface transportation side. Uh, but, you know, at a very broad level, we've, we've heard this from multiple things, there are going to be five key drivers as we think of where the future mobility is, right? It's about being electric, about connected, about shared, um, about autonomous and powered by renewable energy. And you've heard this multiple times. What's interesting is two things. One is, in the last few years, there's been tremendous progress in each of these verticals independently. Right? You've got renewable energy at a price that's under three rupees. You've got electric vehicles that are really making business sense today. Um, and you see connectivity in almost everything you do. People use shared transportation all the time. But what would be key, what's going to be very uh, big going forward is at the intersection of these, active, of these five key uh, uh, pillars that come together and what would that do in terms of the future. So let's think about this. If you look at electrics, they're probably around 10% more efficient overall from an energy consumption by having better powertrains, lower drag, rolling resistance, so you'll get a 10% lower cost. You then say, I'm going to use renewable energy. I could probably reduce the cost by another 10%. Then you say, hey, listen, what about if I do shared mobility? We get a 20% improvement in performance. Then you start to say, what if I remove the driver from the equation? There's another 20-30% cost reduction. And what if I get true connectivity? If, you know, 100,000 of us want to go from this side of town to Whitefield and you're truly connected, you can get another 10% efficiency. So what does this mean? That by 2030, we could get transportation to probably be 30% as expensive than where it is today. We could look at everything, of course, being green would be hygiene. And also, it would be completely... Uh, uh, energy clean right through the ecosystem. This is a fairly big transformation that we're going, which is a combination of technologies and business models that's going to get us there here, right? And it's across platforms that's going to happen, uh, which would transform how we think of mobility here. So what's really driving at least the first piece of you know, road transportation or surface transportation in India? You know, we're all aware that you know, our Transportation is 7% of our GDP today. This is a huge amount from the auto industry. Um, and almost five, you know, 4 to 5% of our manufacturing, 50% of our manufacturing GDP in the country. So from an industry point of view, it's very important for the country. If you think, of course, from climate change and from uh, energy point of view, where we're importing, you know, 80, 90 billion dollars of oil, it's very critical that we address these issues. So here's an opportunity as we think as a country of how we can address all these three pieces in a meaningful manner. And I think connecting energy with mobility is going to make a huge impact uh, in the years to come. For example, if we were to fast forward to 2030 and just take for a second that every vehicle is electrical. Very hypothetical, we won't be at a state by 2030 where every, every vehicle will be electric, which is also the past fleet. India would need around 300 gigawatts of renewable energy, right? And we're planning by 2030 to have around 600 gigawatts of renewable energy. So theoretically, we could power the entire surface transportation of the country by complete renewable energy on this front. Of course, from when you generate energy to when you use it, there will be gaps, so you'll need storage and other mechanisms. But that's a very important perspective of why you can attack both energy and mobility in one, one space and the impact. What would that mean in terms of size? That's probably less than 0.5% of Rajasthan covered with solar panels. That would do that for you, right? So, and it, it's available at under three bucks a unit, which means it makes business sense for someone to look at it. So transformation is, can be very huge for us as a country in the next seven years as we think of integrating energy and mobility. Now, the global markets as EVs has, you know, it's, it's been 10 million this year for passenger vehicles, right? Uh, uh, this last year, sorry, 22. And 23 is supposed to be 17 million, right? Um, India also for the first year crossed a million vehicles, which is, which is great. And I see a lot of people here 
in the thing who's responsible for making that happen. And congratulations to all of you to, to being part of that journey to accelerate India's vision here. But scooters for the first time last month, you know, exceeded 5%. So getting to 80% in the next five, six years is a real, is a, is a very much a reality. In three-wheelers, loaders, we've crossed, uh, you know, over 36%, passenger over 50%. So by 2025, to be 90, 95% electric on three-wheelers, very much a reality, right? Um, if I think of cars, they've been slower, but if I look at shared transportation and taxis, in the last one year, it's grown 6x. So if you think of the trends of what you're going to see, shared will be very big, driven first to drive adoption, and then slowly move to personal mobility. But at shared, it makes business sense. In buses, we've done well. The country's starting to get its first 7,000 buses on the road, and it's putting out a tender for 50,000 buses. The area we haven't done a lot is on trucking. Uh, but interestingly, it's 2% of our fleet, but 40% of the energy we use in the country. So we've got a lot of work to do on the trucking industry. And given the current pricing with the right business model, trucking can actually be cheaper than diesel. So I do believe that in the, in the years to come, you'll see a large transformation on the trucking industry too. So in many ways, you're looking at some of these going faster than others, but there will be a big push across the entire industry on electrification throughout here. So if, if I look at, therefore, the mobility landscape and say, where are the areas that there could be focus or things that we could look at or how would the larger picture be? Well, it's given that electric mobility is clean. I think there will be a next step to how you think of electric mobility from a cleanliness point of view. It's going to be thought both from a well-to-wheel point of view and a cradle-to-grave point of view. So from a well-to-wheel point of view is how quickly can we integrate renewables to enable to have our reduction right. How quickly can we further make our power trains more efficient to make sure that we're even lower energy consumption? On a cradle to grave perspective, how do we limit the use of raw materials to enable us to go further? For example, when you look at a battery swapping option, you may use half the battery, and if your battery life is 3x, you may use one sixth the lithium in its total life cycle, right? And then you can do reuse and then recycle. So it's important that we start thinking clean beyond an electric vehicle is clean, but how do we take the next steps as we think of both cradle to grave and well to wheel emissions uh, in the space, right? Um, the other part from a consumer point is gonna be complete convenience, right? It's about that seamlessness that consumers want, right? Um, a lot more people would take the metro if they knew uh, they could get a vehicle from their home to the metro station in an air condition or whatever transportation they like, and as soon as they reach a metro station, a vehicle is ready to take them to work. Um, if that seamlessness is available, the convenience factor would increase, and of course, people would adopt it. So there's a large role of how do we think of a digitization at scale on this front, right? And I take that one step further on the efficiency side, right? If we look at today, probably, we could do the same transportation in the country by using around 40 to 50% of the assets we have. So think of what that would do to congestion if we could use the same, move the same number of people and goods around with half the assets. And that's all around the efficiency of, of transportation that we could have and how we'd look at data connectivity. So these two pieces need us as a country to create a sort of new mobility platform. What API did UPI did, excuse me, to, to the industry from a payments gateway. The mobility platform has an opportunity to create humongous entrepreneurs and businesses that could start to leverage this. Because if we reduce that and optimize this part of the equation, right, then the impact is huge from a congestion, from an energy, and from a cost point of view. And that's an area which we have to first put away our own independent company goals and think of the larger picture. And if that picture is going to grow, everyone's going to grow with it. And that's going to be an important piece as we think of the larger piece around this. Safety needs to be just almost taken as hygiene and granted. And we had a wake up call earlier this year uh, with a few safety issues. To be honest with you, they were far less than if you take the equivalent of gasoline vehicles for miles done. They just get a lot of attention on the first page of, of newspapers. But that wake-up call has created a set of new regulations. 
And honestly, those new regulations uh, are more advanced than even Europe or US. I think half the cars and products made from there would probably fail the Indian regulation if they came here and they were applicable to them. So it's been pushed to the limit, but the idea is that safety has become important. But why do we need policy to do that, right? And how, why, is, why aren't we inherently thinking um, that when we build products, we have to be responsible for them and we have to have a safety in that culture has been far more ingrained in everything we do, a sense of responsibility in everything we do here has to inculcate as we're trying to take a transformation in a, a new energy space on this front, right? Affordability is the key part. If you want to have sustainability, there's no affordability. If your vehicles cost 20% more, your market is 0.01%. If it's cost neutral, it's 0.1%. 20% lower, we have an infinite market. And we are breaking this paradigm in some segments. And we're seeing that the one segments that we're breaking it, clearly the market is growing very quickly. So affordability in everything we do, and I don't mean low cost, I mean using technology and business models to create affordable and value conscious solutions for consumers, right? And that's an area where India can play a large role on this front. The last thing is around scalability of solutions. We have to, you know, we're caught off guard. The kind of climate change challenges are quite big. We can't take a pace that has taken 20, 30 years to do it. We have to accelerate this in the next five to seven years, which means the scalability of our solutions um, and organizations have to be at a level that are very different. So we have to rethink this, almost go to the computer world and other industries to see how well they did it and, and use those analogies as we think on mobility when we look for this. So what's the opportunity ahead for all of us as we look at this entire space here? Well, from an auto industry uh, at a product level, you've got the two wheelers, you've got the three wheelers, you've got all of that. The industry by 2030 would be $350 billion in India, right? So it's a huge space that we look at it. But the other places would be custom-made vehicles, which are India-centric, and shared mobility solutions, which would play a large role in addition to the standard products that we today already have in the marketplace. You know, 50% of an electric vehicle's bill of materials is, is, uh, is different now going forward, right? That by 2030 would be around a $75 billion opportunity. Uh, the auto component industry today in India is 2.3% of our GDP, so it's a very large amount if we start to think about what this transformation it is, which means everything from motors, controllers, um, you know, chargers, DC-DC converters, air conditioning systems, thermal management, batteries, the whole list of things that are going to be new are going to come through here, and, and we can't undermine the fact of how big part of our GDP this entire thing is and the impact it's going to create if looked at well. The third is new mobility solutions would probably constitute 15% in addition to this piece, right? And these new mobility solutions are going to be around battery as a service, mobility as a service, how we integrate energy, how do we do shared mobility on these new platforms and leveraging this entire area. It's going to be a combination of technologies and software stacks that probably help us enable such new business models, right? In addition to this, there will be areas around financing Data-driven financing would be very large, which is going to be very easy to do in electrics, given the fact they're all connected, that you can now re-look at how um, finance and insurance is going to be do done in the future, which would also create a huge move on the, on the solution business. The fourth area is around energy, right? Energy is going to be replaced by batteries, by charging, by solar, by swapping, and all of these new pieces. And that, by 2030, is an option to be $200 billion, right? because the energy space is extremely large when you look at this entire industry here, right? So what would be the new ecosystem technologies that then we have to create, right? So it's going to be these new solutions around charging and of course battery swapping and V2G will be another big piece on this front, connected car and big data analytics. Um, we're undermining areas like V2G both from a vehicle or from a swap station, but if you start to scale it and say, this is a country with 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 50 million vehicles, that is the amount of energy that could come across. Um, it could be a huge enabling factor for the country when you look at grid balancing at scale on this front. So that would be another big piece. And I think what we can't forget is, is the global side of it, right? We have to start to 
think not of just global components, but global products and global solutions that we create across this area so that we're able to capture the global market on this front. You know, this market is so, so huge that there is not a single silver bullet, right? It's going to be multiple products, multiple solutions that are going to coexist. And policies, hopefully in the future, will be agnostic to them so that we have an environment of entrepreneurship and solutions. And over time, they'll settle down to what's right for the market. And at the early stages, right, um, multiple solutions should run because we don't know where they're going to go in the future. And they all have different customers and different use cases. And it's important to look at that and not be myopic when you're thinking of the future on this front. And how does it mean for people and organizations? You know, when I think from a team point of view, it's a new way of thinking of the future mobility, right? People have to be problem solvers. You're not a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, or you know, a computer engineer. You're a, you understand system solutions. You have to go across everything to find answers for this front. And that requires us to rethink the kind of organizations we create and the people to enable us to think differently if you're going to look at the future of mobility and the kind of impact it's going to create in the next five to 10 years. Right? It's also important for us to look across the business models and look at technologies and combine them because that intersection of business models and technologies is where there will be a lot of disruption happening and we cannot think of them as separate accesses. For organizations, since you can't do everything, it's about new ways of partnering. It's about new ways of getting quicker to market. It's of new ways of looking at uh, open solutions that come together that you can build on. Right? And, and so I think partnerships is going to take a very large role as we look at this. And in this whole thing, my you know, two cents is we got to think global from day one. This is a flat playing field. If we don't do it, someone globally will come and disrupt us. So we might as well do it here and go and disrupt globally on this front. And don't think just of the solutions here. Today, if an iPhone is done, it can be made anywhere in the world, and it's for the same consumer base. Similarly, the products and solutions we create have to be thought with that in mind. I heard the buzzer, so I'll just do a parting thought. I've been doing this for over 30 years, right? And it's the first time I've seen everything come together, right? Um, oil prices are high. Cost of renewable energy is the lowest. Technology has just gone ways deep, way in terms of the pricing of batteries to the technology things. There are, I saw a motor the other day which was 13 kilograms and produced 350 kilowatt of power, right? That's 500 horsepower. Can you imagine a 13 kilogram motor powering a large truck, right? That's the way the technology is changing on, on a solution that we've looked at it, right? Consumer behavior is changing today. They're willing to adopt, right? And of course, policy is so much more favorable today. So there's never a better time for us to look at this industry, right? Be part of it, make a change, a huge change globally, and create India as a winner in this space. Thanks once again.